some of them are a little bit blurry here, but some of them are okay, and I'm looking at the exterior to start with. And I think, all right, let's start at the front. The reason cars look like they do and have a, a mouth or an opening is because of cooling. And so sure. electric cars don't do that. Maybe a little bit of battery cooling and brake cooling, but not to the extent that combustion engines converting all that power into heat need that yeah. front cooling. Don't, don't need it. Not yeah. a radio. Don't need it. So I think, okay, how will Tesla resolve this? And they did it. So a, a fairly successful. Mitch now looks like a. design, no, if it doesn't need to be there, then it isn't, but I think it's the, the single biggest failing point of this car, as I look at it, and I think, okay, maybe it'll be taken up by a license tag, or maybe you can draw, maybe it'll be like chalkboard paint, and kids can walk by and scribble in the car, or something like that, it just, something about it just doesn't have enough of a signature face, it's almost like a, a car without a nose, or a face without a nose. Well, it's two eyes. It reminds me of. And it's got this lower yeah. cooling down here. I mean, in the middle. Yeah. It, it's a little bit blank for my taste. But, it's, what do you think? but it's an unknown. It's an unknown. Nobody knows. I mean, we, genuinely, nobody knows or has figured out yet how to design the front of a car that doesn't need a frame. What do you do? There's and, and, some and we're development so, here. <laughs> and we're so, and we're so completely conditioned to it needing an opening that we're expecting one. And as a result, I look at this and it, it strikes me, I remember when you were going to Art Center and I would walk around and see people's like form designs or their, their form studies. And it was a bunch of, bunch of flowing lines but no real openings or character or that kind of stuff. That's what the front of this looks like. It yeah. looks like the yeah. execution of a CAD model or the execution of one of those things. But I wanna say to you, when I look at it, my first thought is it looks to me design-wise, the whole car, looks to me like a cross between a Model X and a Panamera. I don't think it's unattractive, but I, I don't look at it and go, that's cool. I think the S looks great. I don't like the X doll. This is somewhere right in the middle. And, and from many angles, I think the front looks a lot like a Panamera. I think the overall shape looks more like a Panamera even than the Model S does. This feels like a direct blending of the Panamera styling and the Model X styling. And I'm not sure that's good. But it does have normal doors. That's that's a revelation. It's just got doors. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing. I was in the studio a year and a half ago, and I thought, all right, well, this Model X has some pretty interesting approaching approaches to doors. I thought this was going to be somewhere along the lines of an RX-8 kind of a door mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. and Franz having come from Mazda and influencing yeah. that design, and then you know Elon's got this thing with doors. I'm kind of glad they didn't do anything because I'll guarantee you. That kept the price down. That just oh, yeah. Yeah. normal doors helped you yeah. keep on the price target. So, all right, yep. I'm fine right. with that. I, I like the the roof line. It's a single arc, which is mm -hmm. actually pretty yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But I if agree. you notice, this he said this huge rear backlight, so that the entire rear glass goes up into the rear roof line. And I think, yep. oh great, you know, for guys like me, that just means sunburnt melon. So I hope there's a shade back there. But yeah, it's it's the it's the reverse of the model of the of the Model X idea where the front glass goes and tells the right. right way past the reverse. Of that. This is the back glass doing it, yeah. which is cool. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I have well, to say, I'm looking at some giant some high res glass. photos. <laughs> exactly, I'm looking at some high res photos here. I mean, um, it's a, it's an interesting looking car. I don't know that I personally can call it beautiful. But I think the Panamera is more interesting than it is attractive. I don't find that car attractive. I don't find the X attractive. I mean, that's that's one of the great misconceptions of our Model X piece, is that people think we're comparing the Model X to the Panamera. We aren't, with the possible exception of the fact that you tried to stump me when I started to rant about an ugly car uh, by going, 
Yeah. Wait a minute. What about the Panamera? That's the only reason it came that, up. That's why I brought but, it up because that's that's a paragon of yeah. things you don't like. And I thought, all right, he doesn't like that. It wasn't in any way. It, it was only an example to compare. Not an example of course style, which you even mentioned. But when I'm looking at the actual like nice CAD photos now, I'm actually found those online, mm -hmm. and look, this is very well done. It's really well done. I think it's interesting that we have three cars now with three completely different kind of door handles, and none of them are normal. So I think that's interesting. You know, it, it fits with the it fits with the group really well. Um, I I do I feel like it's a little Panamera in a lot of ways, and for good or bad, that that just fits very much with what we've got here. Yeah, I really like it. Uh, honestly, I, I dislike the front end of this car, but I really appreciate the surface development, the hips, the surface transitions. They're so quick to make like surface transitions. I just yeah. come over, I come back around to the front, and I think. All right, this car is well designed. Kudos to the design team. I know a lot of the guys on the team, and then I come around to the front and I go, "Yeah, what do you do here? Let's do some sort of yeah. graphical element or something like the um, the BMW i3. Well, there's no inlets on the front of the graphic. Like, like those yeah. Kili grills are an icon graphic element. Yeah. So it still has it, but that can't do anything. With it, you know. So for that matter, you know, just now think about this. What if you pulled that Tesla and walked the hood? And put it in the middle of that blank space. Even that would help. Yeah, something like that, or you know what they've do, done with the uh, the X. It, it's some yeah. sort of you know slight shape, and it just breaks it's up their that. non grill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Their non grill. Their non grill up is huge. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, that, that's a tough. That's a tough question right now. Yeah. Uh, that it's it's a great new world in that regard. And what do we do here if we don't have to have the nose have any opening? That's a big question. All right. It's almost look that that panel looks almost like the unfinished panel on this one. It is. It is. I, I think the rest of the design is successful. I'm just that front is just it's a face without a nose, and it just needs some kind of graphic something break up to to break up the surface. But all right, that's what we're living with. But uh, on to the interior. I'm cycling back yes. to the photo of the interior here, and. Um, I can't wait to complete yeah. lack of gauge cluster. There's there's nothing. And I hope you don't have kids because this is, interior is entirely swathed in gleaming white. What is it with white? Yes. I, I just not getting that one. Well, but, I mean, uh, that, but it's okay. great but it's great for show car. It's not no see will spec as well. Very little spec in this way. I know that the Model X is that yeah. one too, but but, but uh, most people will never get a white interior because they know that three or four times you're gonna get a lot of it with blue jeans on and it's no longer <laughs> Forget kids for a second. Sorry, I can't but drive my car through Reaver Day. It's, it's a white interior. I, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> switch cars. We switched the SUV at that point. But, but you're right. This has no gauge cluster at all. There's nothing. And the screen has gotten larger. Or or maybe it's just turns out it look like it's actually larger. I'm just I'm looking at this interior design. It looks very, very clean and simple. It's too clean and too simple. There's, there's nothing going on here, and that means there's no other place to look but the screen. And I'm worried that nobody's going to look out the front windshield anymore. I mean, I know it's got autonomous capability with it, but you still have to steer this car. And I'm worried that, well, if all you're going to do is look at the stupid screen, and that's it. I, I'm going, but there's nothing but as to look we, at. You're right, there's nothing to look at, and it almost looks like you see when you see a concept car in two years where they put an interior on it kind of, it has that feel because there is so little here. However, we talked about it on the Model X review and it plays in here. This interior completely plays to autopilot and autonomous driving. It absolutely does. <laughs> 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 But, but here's the thing. You and I aren't ready for it because of the way we start this podcast. We say, if you're looking for an appliance, this is not your show. <laughs> we don't want an appliance. Once you have a transportation pod, you're buying an appliance. Maybe we need you're not to buying that. a thing that... <laughs> well, but no, that's how we feel still. That's still valid. If you're looking it's for a pod, this is not your show. This is the Sorry. beginning. Yeah, talk about podcasts. But this is the beginning. <laughs> there we go. Of this is the beginning of transportation pods in a real way. I look at this interior and I go, "Yep, I see it. I see where we're headed." And their autopilot is good enough 
then it makes sense in that regard too. There's nothing to steal. Hey, this, is, this is so awesome to drive. It's going to be about moving yourself around, which is fine. There's a, there's, there's a market for that. Base model will still be a good car. It'll still be a good car. No, I kind no, of thought he was, he was almost apologizing for it because I bet you the one you want is 60 grand. And, and look, this is not a Tesla thing. That's true. Of, I mean, we talk about BMWs and IDs, and one of the things that I count on all the time is don't buy a base German car. Your 3 Series you can get for 35. The one you want is 50. Well, you pound you on know, Porsche, so and the one you want is 100 grand. Here's thirty thousand. Well, that Porsche, 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 Porsche is even more yeah. extreme. Porsche is even more extreme. The, yeah. yeah, you can get a base Cayman for seventy, but the one you really want is at least ninety. I mean, that's yeah. absurd. Yeah. Every yeah. car maker does this to some degree. I, so I'm not, I'm not saying Tesla's unique in that regard, but I did think it was interesting that he's almost apologizing for the base model, and the specs on that are zero to sixty in six seconds and two hundred and fifteen miles. That's your thirty-five thousand dollar car. Okay. Now, Which, when you compare that. You which know, is fine. It might be fine for most people if they're buying this as an appliance, which, which as we will say. Be fine. This is just a pod. Which will be fine. Right. But at that point, you really are playing in the Bolt's territory. You're, you're close to the Bolt. I mean, it's a 200-mile car. And, mile you know, I don't know, what it's zero to, I don't know what it's 0 to 60 is, but it's a 200-mile range car. And it's about the same price. I mean, you've got, you've got to pare these things down to accomplish it. I have no doubt that this will still be faster than the Bolt. I'm sure they have set targets specifically for it to still be the fastest electric car at 35 grand. I have no doubt. But wow. 0 to 60 in 6 seconds, 215 mile range, these are not the wow figures. They aren't. You're going to have to spend probably 60 grand to wire yourself. Yeah, I, I did notice the crowd reaction as soon as he said, 0 to 60 in 6 seconds, and everybody started clapping like, oh, well, wait, 6 seconds is not fast these days. Why, why are we clapping? Yeah, six. Yeah. I, I don't want the when six second. I want the three second. Where's the three second? Exactly. Oh, when your well, ludicrous mode SUV is doing three seconds. Okay. Six yeah. Oh. Your your small family sedan doing it twice that long ceases to be something you clap about. I, I, and, I, and I'm not saying. Look, my FRS can't do six seconds. I'm not saying six seconds is slow, but it's it's all relative in this model. In, in this. And for what he's already created, I mean, he's already created the benchmark of 3.2. That's the one you want. Oh, yeah. just hold your Apple Pay phone up to the screen, and you can upgrade right now. <laughs> Charge your credit card right now. It'll probably be already integrated. Apple Pay is already integrated, so you just go through a drive-thru, and it just charges right to your car. Yeah. Maybe. Wow. Um, I, I still think it's. I still think the play here is not cars. I think the play is batteries, superchargers, and the pump. That's how Tesla actually makes money, because you know they aren't, still aren't. I, look, I'm not a guy that follows Wall Street, but but you don't have to go far to find out that Tesla still technically isn't profitable. And you know, they're, they're, I've, I've read various figures yeah. as to what amount of money they lose on Model S's. I am not saying that makes them bad or the cars bad, but I'm saying at some point you have to shift the model to just make money, and I think the make money model and the game plan here is batteries and superchargers. Model 3 is yeah. here. It's fine, and you'll see one on the road in two years. So there's this thing that I've been noodling all day, you know, knowing this is coming, and I, I mentioned this to you. I, I secretly want to say it, so I'm, I'm secretly saying it but not saying it, and that is okay. these subsidies and the, the rebates that exist when you buy an electric car in certain countries, which sure. I believe are going away at some point, ours too. And that is, are we subsidizing rich people? By the first two Model X's, the Model X and the Model S, the first two Tesla yeah. models, they're 80,000 and well, there's 140, 150,000. So by yeah. having all this, because there's not one yet, and Elon even said, as I said before, hey, thanks everybody for buying those previous cars so we can actually fund development of this one, in addition to government subsidies. It's a yeah, touchy it wasn't subject. Just people. 
I know Dude, people are going to be on top of the flag. Yeah. I, I, I know people are going to be set aflame by this comment, but I, yeah, this it's got to be thirty five thousand for all the rest of us to want it, because then Elon said you won't be able to buy a better car for that price, which I wanted to raise my hand and say, um, I, I take issue with that. I, I do. Mm. I, I disagree because we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. Yeah. That, define better. I mean, well, there is you're, no you're right. perfect that's car. The thing. That's exactly. That's the thing that we talk about all the time, and that's one of the reasons that there have been there has been some vitriol. Well, some is an understatement on the Model <laughs> X review. And I will say, yes, I have read all twelve hundred comments. And thank you very much. Uh, I will never get those years of my life back. However, uh, the reason for some of that vitriol is because Tesla, again, it's kind of a religion. And I've talked about it also with the, with the GTR we talked about it last week. When you get to cars you so aspire to, you, you look at them in this golden light and there's nothing wrong with them. No car is perfect. And I'll go another one. No transportation thought is perfect. And you're right, at $35,000, is there a better car? What's your definition? And I will say right now, what would be interesting is to have a base Model 3 and to drive it against the base $35,000 that's an interesting genuinely sure, might. Sure. But that would be a very interesting discussion. I think I think the discussion gets harder at 5560, where this thing will probably time out. I think that's where it gets a lot more interesting. At 35, that's a fascinating world because there's a lot of thirty-five thousand dollar cars, you know, German cars, and I'm just like, well, I wouldn't buy them that spec. So mm -hmm. it's, sure. it's a really interesting place to play. I mean, yeah, he, he said this other comment that I'll probably get it wrong, but something along the lines of consumer reports saying that the Model S is the best car ever, along with you know, crash test, considering all this stuff, it's the best car ever. Uh, okay, that's that's one opinion. That's fine. It is a great car. I like it. Mm -hmm. But the best well, consumer car reports, ever. consumer reports broke their own scale and gave it like a hundred and four out of a hundred, which. I, I, from an editorial standpoint, I don't understand how you do that. I just don't understand how you justify, you know, we're going to break our scale and risk our reputation on giving this more than that. But apparently, I, and somebody's going to check me on this, but I believe that, that Consumer Reports had enough trouble with their long-term car, enough recalls, that they took it off their recommended list. Well, that wasn't mentioned. So, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there's, I actually really like the Model S. I think it's an incredibly impressive car. But the, the problem is, we are bumping into that thing that happened in all these press reviews, which is, let me tell you why you're awesome. And I don't have, I don't forget Tesla, but anybody, let me tell you why you're awesome. That's what the press reviews are about. Marketing 101, and, right? Exactly. And people have asked us multiple times on the Model X review, why are we talking about the safety? Yes, these cars are safe, but the only person that has actually crash tested the X so far is Tesla. <laughs> so yeah. them saying it's yeah. the safest car, it's the safest issue in the world, or them saying that the Model 3 is the safest car, blah, blah, blah. of course you're going to say that. And don't get me wrong, it may be true, but until a third car takes it and crashes it, puts it up against the scale of other cars and goes, that's the best. I'm not going to look at what Tesla says about their own vehicle and its crash I Because it has no huge combustion engine to compress, it would stand the reason that it should be taken out this huge bump and can fly it. I agree with that, and they are incredibly safe cars. But them saying we have made the safest car when they're the only ones that have tested it? Really? <laughs> are we going to back that play? Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it, it remains to be seen. I mean, I, uh, I wonder if you get more of the model options behind the page and maybe something is actually easy to physically buy that you can verify that. Also, if you put $1,000 down, does that happen or you just get an allocation of bid slots essentially at that point? I think it's just I think it's just a your order is up. I think it's like your model of your M2, even though you know what the story is. I think it's like M2, they will call you when your slot comes up and tell you what your options are. And some point, what do you want? Here's, Elon, here's the list. Elon even acknowledged this was revealed part one. Right. And right. clearly the thing he's not revealing is what are the versions of this car? He's mentioned the specs for the base, he's mentioned the price for the base, he hasn't mentioned anything. So clearly yeah. there will be versions, we don't know what they will be, what they will cost, it's all conjecture at this point. I think you're just going to have your credit card on file with Tesla, and as soon as you want a new feature, you just click buy. 
I, I bet yeah. you it's just like buying music, the way you buy music these days. The Apple iTunes store, if you want the song, it just shows up on your credit card and it well, makes buying things very easy, dangerous. Yeah, but think about, think about the way we buy apps. You get yeah. the free version of the app, and when you get annoyed with the ads, guess what you do? You say, I'd like to upgrade, and now voila. <laughs> it's going to be advertisements kind of all over the screen, and spam, and all these that's what that, malware. That's what that ticker's for. <laughs> that's what that ticker's for, because the $35,000 version is constantly ticking ads. If you want to shut that off and just make it go silent, you've got to upgrade. You've got to pay money. Is. Just buy here. Spend five grand that's more. Terrible. Dang it. That's terrible. <laughs> You know, it's just going to be malware all over the screen. Like, dang it, I don't need the pill. I don't need that. I have the base I have the base Model 3 with ads. That's <laughs> terrible, but so funny. It's like Pandora oh, Radio man. or anything else with ads.